can start. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. I'm uh, Alberto Desca, a master student in uh, Politecnico di Milano, and I spent uh, three months here uh, working uh, on my project uh, titled Integrated Risk Assessment for, the, for Wastewater Use in Agriculture, How to Prioritize the Contaminants of Emerging Concern. So we can start just with a brief contact uh, introduction. I would like to stress you about the problem with uh, water uh, of water scarcity that is increased from uh, caused by rapid urbanization and uh, climate change. And this in, in this context, the agriculture plays a fundamental role because, uh, as we know, is the most uh, water intensive, intensive sector. So at this point, the reuse of uh, reclaimed wastewater as an, an alternative irrigation water source can be a solution to, to this problem. Of course, we have uh, a lot of positive aspects about reuse, but also some uh, ne negative aspects. For example, the, uh, the cross-contamination between the different environmental compartments, and in particular, of the contaminants of uh, emerging concern that are this group of uh, molecules that are very spread in the, in the system and in our, uh, in our lives. And this group of molecules is uh, characterized by variety, uh, presence in a very low concentration. Most, for most of the cases, they are uh, not very well regulated and there are some lacks in uh, toxicological studies. So uh, at the end, we can say that we have a lot of uncertainties of the selection of the CSC and of uh, their prioritization, both in terms of where to prioritize them and both in terms of uh, which kind of molecules, molecules need to be prioritized most. So uh, in this context of reuse, we can have two kinds of risks that are environmental and uh, human ones. And this kind of risk are function of the type of uh, we use that we adopt. We can have like a direct use that is more focused on the human health risk and an environmental one that is still considered both the risk. So at the end, we can see that uh, we need an integrated, uh, an integrated risk assessment uh, procedure and approaches that consider both the, uh, the risk that I, that I show you to you. So uh, at this point, uh, this is the definition of my work. So the aim was to prioritize these contaminants on the base of human and environmental risk in the, in the context of agricultural use of uh, wastewater. How to do that? Applying uh, with application and the comparison of two uh, risk-based uh, prioritization approach that are the one uh, from QCR, the QCRA, so the Quantitative Chemical Risk Assessment Procedure and the uh, type of procedure. So uh, briefly, here I introduce the, the step of my work. We have like a first phase of uh, definition and uh, upgrade of the procedures. Then we can find uh, uh, two steps regarding the selection of the contaminants and of the environmental compartments, and then the collection of all the data and uh, that are needed to apply the, the procedure and that uh, uh, help us to, uh, to screen the contaminants function of the data that are needed. Then the last two phase uh, regarding the uh, application of the two different procedures, the, uh, res the I mean, checking of the, of the analysis of the results and to prioritize finally the contaminants. So uh, about the First phase, uh, we can introduce the first uh, procedure, that is the quantitative chemical risk assessment. We can start from the deterministic risk assessment pro procedure that is called CRA, chemical risk assessment, that is able to evaluate risk using punct uh, punctual like uh, values, both in terms of concentration, both in terms of toxicological threshold. So basically we divide the concentration from the, by the threshold and we evaluate the risk in terms of above or below one. If the risk is below one, we are in a, like, let's say, safe situation in case of uh, results of, um, above one, we have uh, the risk. The problem of these procedures is that it's not able to, uh, to deal with the uncertainties, both in terms of concentration and both in terms of risk. And this, in this case, the quantitative chemical risk assessment was uh, developed that this study is able to evaluate the risk considering the, the probability distribution of the parameters and so uh, is able to evaluate the risk in terms of probability to be above uh, a certain threshold. And so for sure, they, they give like a better result. So here I reported the two ways to evaluate the two risks, the human one and the environmental one. For the human one, we divide the concentration in the crops 
by the reference dose, that is the toxicological parameter used to evaluate the human risk. For the environmental uh, risk, we, we do the same, but with the predicted mass effect concentration. That is like, is the same of reference dose, but more focused on the environment. So at the end, this procedure is able to uh, evaluate the risk based on, uh, so it can give, sorry, a prioritization of the contaminants based on the evaluated risk. The problem of this procedure, as you understood, is that it requires a lot of concentration data that uh, maybe are not always very easy to, to find. And so uh, at this point, the second procedure can help us because instead is, uh, it doesn't use uh, concentration. The, the procedure that I'm talking about is the one that uses TIPOL. The TIPOL is a software that is able to classify the molecules function of the two kinds of parameters that are the molecular descriptors that describe the chemical properties and the structures of the molecules and the environmental parameters that instead are more related to the environmental behavior. So basically the, the software uh, puts together like make some analysis based on these parameters and is able to, uh, to clusterize the, molecule, the molecules so to classify them based on these two kinds of parameters. On the right we can have like a uh, a typical output uh, of the analysis. So basically, okay. at this point, the risk uh, was uh, is performed outside from time pool. So it's not it does not depend on the results of clusterization. So basically, what uh, what is is done in order to evaluate the risk is to take this uh, kind of toxicological parameters that are character characterization factors that came from the database Eustox that are uh, in basically are uh, like I have like the same meaning of the, the two that I showed before, but they like they they are used in, in a different way. So basically, these are the formula that uh, this procedure uses to evaluate the risk. So we multiply the concentration, we multiply sorry the two toxicological parameters for the concentration. In this case, in both the case, the concentration in the surface water. So at this point, we had the two procedures to evaluate the risk in two different ways. But the point is uh, how we can introduce uh, the toxicological information inside TIPOL. So in order to have uh, like uh, um, a clusterization that can be made also in terms of uh, toxicity and not just in terms of uh, environmental parameters and uh, molecular descriptor. And so basically this is what we have done. We, uh, we introduce at, uh, in the database of TIPOL the toxicological parameters in order to evaluate the prioritization also based on the toxicity. And so in this case, to make like the comparison between TIPOL and the QCRA like uh, better. So about the second phase, we just uh, selected two compartments of interest. There are the crop that is more for the human risk and the surface water that are more for the environmental one. We start from an initial data set of, of contaminants of emerging compost that is uh, Sorry, concern that is composed by uh, 15 initial uh, molecules came from the Environmental Quality Standard Directive, and then 14 that are already under investigation in different monitoring campaigns. And then we had uh, other 22 uh, contaminants from uh, a literature review focused on the paper about uh, wastewater, wastewater use. So we started the analysis with this uh, uh, 51 list of molecules. Here are mm -hmm. divided in the three categories. We can see that we have a big group of, of molecules that are um, divided in different uh, like classes. We have we have this most uh, we have some phenols, some hormones, some uh, antibiotics. So we are able to uh, classify a lot of them. So about the third phase, the point was uh, um, how we can uh, let's say collect all the data that are needed to perform both the procedure. So for each contaminant, we uh, search about in this first. Uh, part, just about the toxicological parameters, and the typal part. Typal part that uh, regards like uh, both the presence of the molecules inside the software, and of course the presence of uh, uh, values in terms of molecular descriptor and environmental parameters. So at the end of this uh, first phase, so of this first screening, let's say, the situation is shown here. So we had like uh, all the values needed for uh, 37 out of uh, 51 instead for, uh, I mean, 14 of them 
uh, needed to be removed because we, we did not find the parameters or they uh, were not present inside the, the software. So the second part instead regards like the uh, research of concentration in literature. So we, let's say, as, as we, we did before, we search in literature, in papers about uh, acceptable values, uh, both uh, in the surface water and in the crop. While for the surface water, we did not have uh, problems. I mean, it was not uh, hard to find values. For crops, instead, we had uh, a lot of problems. So here is a report like uh, a bar plot that show like uh, the, the comparison between the measured values and the, uh, the values below the limit of quantification for all the, uh, the 37 contaminants. So basically for the crops, we, we had uh, these two uh, big problems that are the different numerosity, as, we, as we, you can see, and the, a lot, the, a lot, the greater amount of data that are censored. That means that are uh, below the limits. As you can see, we have a group of five molecules on the right for which we did not, have, uh, we did not find values. And I would like to stress you about the, the free hormones that are present uh, here at the fact that we did not find values for them will then affect the result that I will show you later on. Uh, in addition, we had to remove, unfortunately, other 10 molecules because the okay. amount of values below the limits was uh, uh, too high respect to the measured one. We set here a threshold on three, and the threshold of uh, three is, was set in order to the further approach that we, that we applied. That is like a statistical one focused on the finding the best fit in distribution for each contaminant and a new data set generation in order to solve the two problems that I showed in the previous slide. So we basically we test three methods for the for this purpose. So we for the first two, we replace the values below the limit with half of the limit or one third of the limit. And the, for the third one, instead we apply the maximum likelihood estimation. That is like a, uh, a statistical uh, uh, method that is able to uh, estimate the best fit in distribution considering also the sensor data. So basically, we tested these three uh, methodologies and we create, uh, we evaluate the best fit in distribution and we create a data set of 1000 data for each, uh, for each uh, contaminant. Here it is uh, reported like uh, a comparison focus, focus on the, the crop. Uh, of the, the three methods for each contaminant. So basically after that, we, we applied uh, some statistical analysis in order to find the, which one of these three methods was the best one. And we found that the MLA was uh, the best. So we decided to go, to go further with the data set generated from the MLA. And here I reported just to, to show you the uh, box plot of the different uh, concentration generated for, in this case, for the 37. So you can see that uh, for the surface water, we have just uh, 30, I mean, for the surface water, we had 37 out of 37. Instead, for the crop, we have just uh, 22 out of 37 because as I saw, we need to, we needed to remove the 15 contaminants. So basically at this point, we had uh, all the data required to apply the procedure. So we start with uh, the typo procedure. So basically here I report like a classic uh, output uh, from Typol. Typol uh, applies like a partial least square that is able to uh, analyze the different, uh, uh, let's say parameters and to, to make a relationship between them in terms of uh, correlate them together and correlate them function of the, uh, of the principal components of the analysis. Uh, as you can see here, I report like with the, I mean, I reported with the blue one, the molecular descriptors, and I would like to stress you about the, 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 the one that are circled because are the one related to the size of the molecules. And so, as you can see, the molecular size is one of the most important parameters for our analysis. Then with the orange one, we have like the environmental parameters that here are not really clear, but we have on the right, the water solubility, the vapor pressure, and the airy constant. Then in the middle is the DT50. And then on the bottom, we have the by concentration factor and the QW. So uh, at this point, this was the situation before the addition of the to toxicological parameter. Here instead are reported the toxicological parameters in the, the real position of the, of the analysis 
So as you can see, uh, this was the this were the, the the I mean the results of this application. And here you can find like a, a very clear trend uh, from the toxicity toxicity that increased from the top left to the sorry from to, from the bot, the top right to the bottom left. So uh, basically we we did this uh, analysis on Typol based on different combination of scenarios. Scenarios means uh, that we uh, combine the different parameters together in order to check the result. But what I, I, I want to, to show you is here is the, the difference between the situation before the additional of toxicological parameters, that was uh, basically the situation before our, uh, our modification, and this called the standard analysis. Compare this to the, uh, the complete analysis that is, that is basically the, the previous one, but with the addition of the toxicological parameters. And here I reported like the, the results in terms of uh, clusterization. So you can see this plot uh, in the same way of the, the, previous, what, in the previous one, in terms of that uh, the different uh, uh, parameters are in the same position of the, of the space. So for example, the cluster three, that is the the one on the left in, in includes like the biggest molecules. Instead, if you see the toxicity is the same, for example, we have the cluster that is with the, the cyan color that includes the, the most toxic one. Instead, we have with the with the black one, the less toxic, for example. And then this is the, the global, the two clusterizations. And we can see that uh, considering the situation before our modification, so without the toxicological parameters or after the addition of toxicological parameters, the results change a lot, especially in terms of cluster five. You can see that without the toxicological parameter, it includes much many, much more many molecules. The same for the cluster one and cluster two. We can see that we have uh, many differences. So, uh, of course, we we did not do just uh, a comparison between that two this, those two scenarios but with some others. And this is like the global trend that came from the uh, typal analysis. So we have basically, as you, as you saw, always five clusters that are, that are here uh, distributed in the space. We have like the cluster one that, uh, that includes the molecules that are the smallest one with the lowest toxicity. Then uh, the, with the red one, we have the molecules characterized by small, medium size and medium toxicity. With the cyan one are the, the one characterized by highest toxicity. So we, we can find here the hormones. Then we have with the with the green one the the biggest molecules. And then with the I mean the cluster four instead it contains like molecules that show like average values for uh, most of the of the parameters. So at this point we had this result, but uh, what we wanted to do is to prioritize them. So how to prioritize? In this case, we can prioritize in two ways that are uh, considering the toxicological parameters or considering the risk. So ba basically what we have done was to uh, take the, to took the toxicological parameters of each molecule to, and to uh, evaluate the median value of each cluster for each uh, parameter in order to prioritize the cluster function of, of the toxic, function of the toxicological parameter in the first case or function of the risk in the second one. In both the case, we obtain a four prioritization for each, uh, for each parameters. Here is reported the, uh, the results of the prioritization for the two scenarios that uh, were the most important one. So the standard analysis before our modification and the, the global analysis after our modification. You can see that in terms of PNEC and reference dose, the um, the situation is worse if the if the parameter uh, is uh, lower for the characterization factor the other way around. So we can see that if we focus, for example, for the last one on the last one on the right, we can see that we have like a linear trend from the cluster one to the cluster five. That means that the cluster one is the less toxic, instead of the cluster five is the the one related with the highest toxicity. I would like to stress you about the situation of the standard analysis in terms of PNEC, we can see that uh, the box plot is very spread. And this because if we uh, do not consider the toxicity, the clusterization, as we saw, change a lot. 
And so um, this box so this, this box plot is very spread because it, the cluster five in terms of standard analysis contains a lot of uh, mole much more molecules respect to the global one. And so uh, its toxicity is uh, completely different in the two cases. So uh, basically here is the same representation, but in terms of table, we have like uh, uh, the same uh, ranking that goes uh, from the top where we have like the the one character, the highest toxicity, then on the bottom, the lowest toxicity. We can see that for most of the scenario, the cluster five is the most toxic one and the cluster one is the less uh, toxic one. The situation in the middle is uh, quite chaotic, but we will see that for the risk is much more chaotic. But for uh, the second, uh, in terms of toxicity, is quite always the cluster three. And then the situation between the cluster two and the cluster four change a lot function uh, of the of the specialist function of the of the scenario. And this because if we, uh, as you, if you remember the the plots, if we change the scenario, the clusterization change, and so also the toxicity of the the global cluster will change. And so this will change the privatization of the contaminants. So. Uh, after, I would like to show you like the same, but in terms of uh, risk, we have here the same situation, but in this case, for the risk is always worse when the risk is higher, of course. Uh, I would like to, uh, to put your attention on the reference dose case, in which we can see that, for example, for the whole uh, scenario, we do not have like uh, values in terms of uh, cluster five, and this because if you remember, uh, we did not have find the concentration values for the free hormones. And uh, in, the, in, the, in this scenario, the free hormones are the only one inside the cluster five. So we, we were not able to evaluate the risk because for the reference dose, we need the concentration in the crop and we did not have uh, these values. So here is reported the same, uh, the same result, but in terms of risk, we can see that in terms of cluster five and cluster one, the situation is the same. But the situation in the in the middle is uh, is much more is much more chaotic. Of course, uh, uh, in terms of reference, reference dose, we can see that uh, the situation. I mean, without having uh, some values for the for the I mean for the risk in terms of reference dose, is much more difficult to to uh, to think uh, or to understand uh, the position of cluster five. So here, finally, I would like to show you the. Uh, like the comparison between the two methods. So the one with the, with the toxicological parameters and the one with the risk. So the table is basically show the, um, this comparison in terms of uh, cells. Where, where you see like the blue red ones, it means that the um, privatization change from one approach to another one. So uh, in the blue red lines, we, we, in the blue red cells, we see on the left, the color that means the clusterization of the the first method, so the toxicological one. Then on the second one is uh, instead it uh, it means like it describes the, the prioritization of the the risk one. Instead, with the cell that are not blurred with the with the numbers, means that the prioritization uh, was the same between the two uh, scenarios, the two methods. Sorry. So uh, on the bottom, I report like uh, the results basically that we wanted to obtain. So a global prioritization coming from the application of this procedure that is shown here. I mean, we have quite always the cluster one that is the less toxic, then the, the situation between the cluster two and the cluster four depends a lot in terms of scenarios. And then we have the cluster three and finally the cluster five. So just to finish, uh, uh, a couple of comments about the, the results. So as you, I think that you understood that the cluster five is always the most toxic, the cluster one is the less toxic. Regarding the center cluster, the situation we saw that is really the function of the type of uh, parameters that we consider, especially in terms of environmental ones that are the first two, or the in terms of human one that are instead the, the latter two. So, uh, for example, for the environmental parameters, we can see that uh, the prioritization gives uh, more or less similar outputs. I mean, the, um, the uh, differences are in a less amount. Instead, for the human ones, as you can see on the right, we have uh, a lot of these uh, differences. Of course, because the reference dose was a little bit uh, uh, like strange, the clusterization 
for the reason that I show you. But also for the human toxicity in terms of uh, characterization factor, we can see that the prioritization are completely different. I mean, and so that means that uh, adding or not the uh, concentration in the analysis will give like uh, different outputs. And this is like, uh, is an important result because uh, as you understand, uh, if we consider or not the concentration, the prioritize of the contaminants will be different. And so this is a, a the result that basically we wanted to obtain. So just some conclusion. Uh, so these are the three like main points that we obtain. So we, we, we introduce the toxicological parameters in TYPO. We generate and we had a big uh, data set of uh, concentration that we can use. And uh, we uh, compare uh, the different uh, privatization of molecules with uh, uh, different me methodologies. So, and this was the like the work uh, I mean, until uh, until now. So this uh, can this will be like uh, the the future steps for the next month that I have to work before uh, the discussion of my thesis. So we will uh, for sure uh, correlate. We will for sure apply the PCR procedure. That is the last step, and so to compare the results. But then we'll be interested to uh, to study the correlation between the privatization that we obtained with the properties of the molecules. Then. We can use like these uh, results to we can validate this result using other set of contaminants. And last but not least, we can like use the properties of the cluster in order to uh, to identify new molecules. I mean, in terms of if we classify some new molecules inside the cluster, we can use like the properties of the cluster to identify these uh, new molecules. Uh, I mean, more more easily. And so that's it. I would like to like to say thank you to all of you for uh, i mean for the for the for the last month especially to eric domini remic remi for your uh, your support and your uh, patience during uh, this uh, these three months